So, recently, a Pokemon card fan found $3,600 in black and white era tins on a Target store shelf, leaving a lot of people to speculate that they should probably head to their local Target in order to become a Pokemon millionaire. However, we all know that's not realistic, but in today's video, we'll hopefully get to take a peek at how it happened, why it happened, and maybe if and when it happens to you, you can understand a little bit more about the interesting story that backstock items like this tend to take. But first, roll that intro. <laughs> Hey Gengar gang, what is going on? My name is Ryan, this is the Analytic Gengar, and welcome to another video. In today's video, friends, we talk about the luckiest target score ever, a recent uh, Pokemon TCG happening that has obviously been quite a little bit of buzz for fans of the community because a lucky, lucky shopper at Target discovered 12 black and white era Pokemon TCG tins. Now, black and white, just as context, was released as early as 2010 all the way up to 2013. So to say the very least, that is a rare find, nearly 10 years old. And the person who scored this stuff bought these tins for MSRP, actually under MSRP, at about $18 US a piece. And those tins are currently going for about $300 on the internet. So, safe to say, he made a ton of money just getting super, super lucky. Now, before we get into it, a few random channel updates. Sorry there was no video this past Saturday. That would have been, I believe, the 4th of September. I decided to take Labor Day off and never even got a chance to um, post or say anything about it. But I figured everyone's probably out and about for the weekend anyway, so it wouldn't be a bother. Bother. But as always, there will be videos consistently throughout, and I will do my very best to let you guys know if and when I choose to take a day off in between. The second thing, Jay Avila, if you're watching this video, congrats, you are the winner of the 18 code cards from the Evolving Skies opening that I did a few weeks back. Um, had some difficulty picking a comment because I, I don't know, I had like a really hard time with the comment picker, but go figure. When I finally ran it and recorded it and got it all to work, uh, Jay, you were the winner. So feel free to get in touch if you're watching today's video. I'm also gonna try to let you know on the comment that I leave on the, comment you left on the video. So, with all that said, let's get into today's actual video content. A article from Dextero.com, of course the article will be linked down below, and if it's not, feel free to let me know because sometimes I forget these things, and I'm happy to get you the link anyway. So, as you can see, uh, here is the article itself published the 1st of September 2021, so very, very, very recently. This um, actually all transpired on Twitter, which was pretty funny because I was watching the entire thing transpire on Twitter, um, but it's actually super cool. So long story short, um, one collector goes into their local Target and they find, let's see, aha, they find these doohickeys right over here. Now, these tins don't look anything like the modern tins that you might see on store shelves. For example, the EV tins that just came out. And he posts a um, at to Pokemon TCG. The person who runs this account is super, super cool. Um, they basically just track Pokemon restocks and they'll tweet them out whenever they come around. So um, because I follow this person, I got like a notification that they had been tagged and had been interacting. Um, and yeah, these tins look nothing like the regular ones. And the funny part is back in the day, they would actually put like a coupon on each of the tins. So the person like opens up one of the coupons and it reads like 2013. And then the copyright information on the back is obviously about a decade ago and the person ended up buying all 12 i question how they were able to buy all 12 for um you know the reason that most times this stuff is like blocked off or whatever and then you can see they even got like the red card savings and that is i believe because at target if you have the red card you save 10 percent on every purchase and then they literally opened one and found out that they had uh emerging powers Boundaries Cross, Plasma Storm, which is obviously a big one given the Charizard that you can find in the Plasma Storm packs. So safe to say, this was a big score. Now, 
Um, of course, it wouldn't be Pokemon without some toxic Twitter people. So some people were very happy for him, as you know, and some people were like, oh, it's fake, haha. <laughs> um, I believe when he posted this receipt, that obviously legitimized the entire thing. So obviously at that point it was kind of like, okay, no, this is actually legit, which is super dope. Um, but it was just funny because some people were like, oh, this is clearly a fake and clearly it was not. So, I mean, that's the entirety of the article. But, uh, today I also wanted to talk about, uh, a couple other random things. So first things first, um, Ryan's lesson for the day. Don't expect this to happen at your local target. This was really cool. This was really fun. This was really interesting. However, this was also very, very rare and probably not going to happen anytime soon ever again. Um, the good news is that with the internet, we tend to see things with more frequency only because people are able to share it. And so if it were to happen again, it would certainly blow up on Twitter again. However, I genuinely believe like this is like one of those once in a decade type of situations. Like nowadays, the rarest thing is to walk into a store and find a hidden fates tin on a store shelf. But the truth of the matter is this was incredibly rare. And the reason it was is because most times distributors will be moving product very, very quickly and very, very efficiently. And as a result, as they get stuff from the Pokemon company or one of its printers, it moves immediately to wherever it is these local distributors distribute their stuff. So as an example, if they need to be distributing to Target or Walmart or, you know, um, any of those other big name chains or even your local game stores, they do that pretty quickly and pretty efficiently. So to say that, you know, this is something that happened at a systematic level probably isn't true. In some of the Twitter comments, for example, what I saw was people saying, oh, this was like a Pokemon mishap where they discovered a warehouse of stuff and it's going to be distributed across America, I think. And that was an opinion. You're certainly entitled to an opinion. However, you're certainly entitled for it not to be right. And I think that's genuinely the case there. The truth of the matter is the Pokemon company has such a robust inventory management system and the printers who print and create the stuff also have such a robust inventory system that something like this happening is unheard of because this would effectively be dead product. This would be, you know, from the perspective of the Pokemon company, this is stuff that was printed 10 years ago and technically doesn't have a retail shelf life anymore. Now, we all know that on the secondary and tertiary markets, this stuff is what we would call vintage or near vintage stuff. And so there's a secondary and tertiary market for it on eBay and on Instagram and Facebook, blah, blah, blah. However, for a legitimate company that's trying to print, you know, millions of cards a day to meet the sky high demand of the Sword and Shield era, truthfully, something like this just wouldn't happen. They wouldn't dedicate resources to printing a one off like this, even if it were for the purpose of creating hype. The other thing that I've seen tossed out there is that this was some sort of um, distribution mishap. So kind of similar to the way that the last situation plays out where Pokemon may have like missed something and found like a crate of these. Uh, so too, maybe Target had a crate of these somewhere in a magical warehouse. And realistically, what happened is now there's going to be one of these on each and every single Target on the East Coast. Again, highly, highly... Uh, unlikely mainly because target uses a distributor network to get their st their store s shelves stocked with pokemon cards meaning it's very unlikely that what you're going to end up with is every target on the east coast having some of this stuff now as you see this person was even cool enough to literally like take a picture of this stuff and yeah you could just see it chilling on store shelves but the truth of the matter is don't expect to see this in any other target in america now, how do I think this ended up being here? Well, my hypothesis and my theory is that it all has to do with the local distributor. In case anyone doesn't know, most targets are stocked by a distributor. So that distributor has a van, loads it with Pokemon cards, and is assigned a route of maybe anywhere from five to 10 different uh, targets to go to every single week and then they go they drop some stuff off they take a photo of the shelves that they've packed for their boss and then they drive away the photo gets submitted to target targets happy and then in some rare instances what has happened is target has actually taken over the job of stocking the shelves themselves so either way that's how distributors work now distributors will receive their product directly from a larger distributor who will be the person who interacts with the pokemon company 
and with the printers that print and package this stuff for distribution. So what's likely to have happened is in case no one knows this, um, the box that these guys come in literally looks exactly like the way they are on the store shelf. It's three wide, so one, two, three tins wide, four tins long, one, two, three, four, and they're positioned exactly this way in the box. So the thing is, is that they've been packaged like this for easily 10 years. They've been packaged like this since the hard gold sold silver era at a minimum. And that's because I know for a fact that's when these tins started being uh, created and distributed widely. During the EX era, they had a few tins, um, but they really became prolific and more like systematically printed along with every set, uh, starting in the you know fourth generation with like hard gold, soul, silver. So the thing is, is that because the packaging has not changed practically over 10 years, it's really easy to mistake one carton of tins for another so my theory is this you know particular box of tins quite literally just sat on a shelf at the local distributors warehouse for years now and it may have gotten pushed to the back it may have fallen off the back it may have you know done something crazy or been on a really high shelf and someone really short works there i don't know but for one reason or the other it sat in that warehouse for quite a period of time and then it appears that recently they found this box of tins now this is where the whole thing about the packaging not changing comes into play because we know for a fact that people especially when it comes to pokemon cards tend to be very greedy now i'm not accusing any of the distributors there of being greedy obviously they did their job and stocked the pokemon items that they had on the store shelves however normally in a situation like this if the person who found this stuff knew what they were looking at they would probably have purchased it immediately and then sold it back for the profit so the thing is is that since the boxes look so similar the person probably thought these were the v tins from the sword and shield era or hidden fates tins or quite literally any other tin that has been produced in the past 10 years so they probably just grabbed the box not knowing what they were looking at walked to target stocked the shelves took a photo and then moved along either that or they had no clue because they even opened the box and packed them on the store shelves meaning they would have seen the stuff too so they may not just genuinely have known what they were looking at if they knew it was pokemon Pokemon cards and their job is to stock Pokemon cards on star on Target store shelves. Period. End of story. However, uh, that just leads me to believe that my theory might be, um, you know, true for the most part, right? I have a feeling the stuff just got pushed to the wayside. It looks very similar to modern product in its like warehouse packaging, and so it was very easy to mistake one for the other. You know, maybe they were spring cleaning, maybe they were reshuffling, maybe they hired someone tall finally. Um, who grabbed the thing on the top shelf, brought it down, put it in the van to get distributed, and then that's how we ended up in this situation. All that means is that, again, this is a incredibly isolated event, and I think from the perspective of wrapping up this video, expectation management is the most important thing that I want to put out there into the community right now. This doesn't happen every day. This uh, certainly won't make you a millionaire overnight. And more importantly, sincerely, although it's really cool and fun and exciting, um, it is probably a very, very unlikely one-off that occurred. Again, just based on some like wacky, happy-go-lucky circumstance that played out where, you know, this stuff got pushed to the side, sat in a warehouse for about a decade, and now finally has made its way to store shelves. So certainly a very happy ending story for the tins because they'll finally get to be placed into the hands of one collector who will either keep them sealed or open them up or sell them blah 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 um and yeah you know just a really funny thing for us as a community to look at but definitely not something that you should expect to happen but with all that said, friends, thanks again for checking out another video. I hope you enjoyed today's video, and if you learned anything new about the target distribution method or how unlikely it is that these tins might have been widely mass-produced and mass-shipped across America in 2021, definitely feel free to leave a like on the video. And if you're not already, feel free to join the Gengar Gang by subscribing to my channel down below to join our happy little community. Other than that, friends, thanks again for checking out another video. I hope you guys are having an amazing Tuesday and we will talk soon. Peace.